What's up guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna start the section for quadratic equations and thought I would start off with four examples. So we have to find the x-intercepts of each of these four quadratics here. Now, sometimes they'll be asking you to find x-intercepts. Sometimes they'll be asking you to find zeros. That's another way to word this uh, question. So x-intercepts, zeros, those mean the same or to just solve a quadratic equation. And there's pretty much two ways to solve quadratic uh, equations or to find the x-intercepts or zeros. You can either do it through factoring, that's what I always look at first, but if the factoring is impossible or you're dealing with too big of numbers, worst case scenario, you could always throw everything in the quadratic formula. So I'm always looking at one of those two strategies. So starting off with number one, we got f of x equals negative 8x squared plus 8x plus 30. So I'm going to rewrite that as y equals negative 8x squared plus 8x plus 30. And when you're finding the x-intercepts, what's the y value going to be? The y value is zero. So this just becomes a quadratic equation to solve. That's why I was saying solving quadratic equations is the same as finding x-intercepts or zeros for that function. So from here, um, you can throw it in the quadratic formula if you want. Let's see if we could factor this though. So notice that from everything we could take out a two and I'm gonna take out a negative two in order to make that leading coefficient positive. So negative two, we'd be left with four x squared. Eight x divided by negative two is minus four x. 30 divided by negative 2 is minus 15. And then let's see if we can factor this quadratic. So 4 times negative 15 gives us negative 60. And then the b value is negative 4. So two numbers that multiply negative 60 add up to negative 4. So negative 10 and 6 work. So we could decompose this. I'm actually going to do this down here. So we could decompose that negative 4x uh, into negative 10x plus 6x minus 15, like that. From these two, we could take out a 2x. So this would be 2x minus 5. From these two, we could take out a 3. So 2x minus 5. And then we'd have 2x minus 5, right? Took out this bracket from both and left with 2x plus 3. So this factors into 2x minus 5, 2x plus 3. This is 0 here. So um, from here, 2x minus 5 has to equal 0, the bracket. So this would be 5 over 2. Or 2x plus 3 has to equal 0. That happens when x is negative 3 over 2. And those are your two answers right there. Those are the two x-intercepts. So x equals 5 over 2, or 2.5, and x equals negative 3 over 2, or um, negative 1.5. Those are the two x-intercepts for that quadratic. So we did it by factoring. Moving on to number 2, we got negative x squared plus 6x. So I wrote that out over here. And notice here that there's no C value. So the C value is zero. And whenever the C value is zero, you always know that one of the X intercepts is going to be zero, at least one of them. Because notice here, super easy to factor this, we could just take out a negative X and we'd be left with X minus six. So when there's no C value, you could always take out an X and with an x by itself, you know that one of the x-intercepts is always going to be 0. So you may want to make a note of that. Whenever you see something like this, no c-value, quadratic with no c-value, right away you know one of the zeros, one of the x-intercepts is going to be 0. And then the other one here would be x is equal to 6. All right, so this one was pretty simple, easy to factor. So the x-intercepts x equals 0, 
x is equal to 6. Moving on to number 3, we got y equals x plus 2 squared minus 16. Notice that this here is given in vertex form. And usually, we're given the quadratics in standard form. That's when we can actually apply these strategies here, when the um, quadratics are in standard form. So if they're given in vertex form, there's actually two ways to do this. So if you want to use one of these strategies, what you have to do is you have to first expand this. You have to convert it to standard form. So if we do that strategy, then we would have x plus 2 times x plus 2. You foil those two brackets out, you'd have x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus 16. This would be x squared uh, plus 4x and 4 minus 16 gives us negative 12, right? And then from here, it's just a quadratic equation. So again, you could put it in the formula. This actually factors smoothly into x plus 6, x minus 2. So that's 0. So x intercept, sorry, you switch the sign, because x plus 6 equals 0. So that means x is equal to negative 6 or x is equal to 2. Those are the two intercepts, right? So that's one way to do it. That's actually the way I would suggest you do it every time. Another way, though, that your teacher may explain or you may see is you could actually solve from here in vertex form. So you plug in 0 for y because we're solving for the x-intercepts. And then you would try to isolate for this x. So the way you do that, you bring the negative 16 over. So you'd have 16 equals x plus 2 squared. Square root both sides. And the square root of 16 is actually plus or minus 4. And here, that gets rid of the exponent 2. So there's two cases here. Either positive 4 equals x plus 2 or negative 4 equals x plus 2 because this is two answers plus or minus 4 when you take that square root. So when you isolate for x here, bring the 2 over, x can either be 2 like that or you bring the 2 over, x can be negative 6. So either way works. Notice how we got the same x-intercepts for both strategies. But uh, if it was me, I'd recommend probably doing this strategy. It's just more consistent with the way we solve all of the other ones. It's just you got to do some work initially to expand it. And then finally, number four, we got y is equal to negative 2x squared plus 7x minus 2. So finding the x-intercepts, plug in 0 here. Now, this actually is not going to factor smoothly because uh, we could take out a negative 1, but even if we don't, negative 2 times negative 2, that is positive 4, and then the b value is 7. What two numbers multiply to 4 and add up to positive 7? Basically, um, it would have to be decimal numbers, if any. There's no whole numbers that, uh, that do that. So, uh, factoring is not going to work. So, best thing to do at this point is just throw it into the quadratic formula. So, what's the a value? Let's write these out on the side. a value is negative 2. b value is 7. c value is negative 2. So, taking those parameters, the quadratic formula is um, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So plugging everything in, negative b, this is positive 7. Basically, this is always going to be the opposite sign of that. So positive 7, this would be negative 7 plus or minus b squared, which would be 7 squared minus 4 times the a value of negative 2 times the c value of negative 2 all over 2 times the a value of negative 2. So simplifying this a little bit, you'll have negative 7 plus or minus. What would go under the square root here? We would have 49 uh, minus 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Positive 8 times negative 2 is minus 16. So you'd have 49 minus 16 in the square root, which is uh, what? 
33. And this would be all over negative 4. So negative 7 plus or minus root 33 all over negative 4. So notice at this point, we're going to have two different answers because of this plus or minus here. So the two cases are x is equal to negative 7 plus root 33 over negative 4. Or x is going to equal negative 7 minus root 33 all over negative 4. And root 33 is actually a decimal number. Uh, if you round it to two decimal places, it's um, 5.74 approximately. This would be over negative 4. So here we'll have negative 7 minus 5.74 all over negative 4. And when you do both of those calculations, you get x is equal to 0.315 here. And again, that's rounded. And then here you'd get x is equal to 3.185. All right, so making sure you do the numerator first, then divide that answer by negative 4. Same thing here. Numerator, divide by negative 4, you get these two answers. So those are the approximate zeros or x-intercepts of this quadratic. And the way you can check these, because they're not the nicest numbers, is you can actually take these x values and plug them in to the quadratic. And you should get a y value that's very close to 0, because if they're x-intercepts, corresponding y value is going to be zero for both. So that's a way that you could check if you're getting these sort of ugly numbers here. Plug them back in, make sure that y value is zero. But nevertheless, when you're finding zeros, you're either going to be factoring or doing the quadratic formula. If factoring, you always check for factoring first. If it doesn't work out, like in this case, you're going to have to do the quadratic formula.